Hey guys, I um, hope you're doing well today. Um, so I thought I'd try something a little bit different and offer you guys a, a full length real time drawing tutorial. So <laughs> let's see how this goes because I am incredibly slow sometimes, especially when doing these kinds of things, but um, I am going to do my best to keep this uh, to a reasonable time length. Um, and let's see if we can do this as quickly as possible. So I am um, going to do a sketch of a pub because, you know, pubs are one of my favourite subjects to draw, one of my favourite pastimes I was going to say, but uh, I suppose going to the pub used to be one of my favourite pastimes when I lived near one. Um, so this is the George um, on the Strand in London. So you can see it's got this kind of uh, awesome kind of Tudor sort of style um, facade which is going to be really cool for um, using the toned paper which is what I'm going to use today. So I am using the Hannah Muller, um, the grey book. Um, it is in the A5 size, um, and yeah, it's the grey paper, hence called the grey, the grey book. Um, so this this kind of sketchbook does come uh, in tanned paper as well, which is called the cappuccino book. Um, I think I actually wanted the cappuccino book, but when I went to the store, they only had the grey one, so. Or I was at least struggling which one to choose, so the universe chose for me, so that's fine. So um, yeah, I've been having loads of fun kind of sketching on this paper, and, and one of my favourite things I've discovered um, is doing this kind of Tudor style buildings. I think they really lend themselves really nicely to this kind of paper, so I thought that's what I would um, do for you today in real time. So this is a, a cafe scene here. So it's definitely a different mindset sketching on toned paper. This is my first toned paper to um, do this on. Um, so uh, I'm definitely learning. Um, and, you know, the, the kind of different mindset really sort of stems from the fact that you're drawing, you already have your mid-tone on the page. So actually what you're adding is the, the highlights, the lights and the darks, whereas we're kind of used to most of us drawing on white paper. We already have the highlights um, there, you know, um, and it's just kind of getting darker from the paper value. But this is um, a bit different from that. So at the moment, I'm keeping it simple, you know, and I'm just drawing kind of um, buildings like this uh, pub um, called the George, um, because I think that, you know, it's um, a really good way to kind of get used to the paper. I like drawing buildings, I like drawing pubs, um, so it works on multiple levels for me. Um, so the things you will need if you um, want to draw along with me, or you can just have me in the background whilst you're drawing something else, you don't have to follow this, but um, we can just hang out and draw. Um, so the things that I have right here is obviously the grey book, the grey tone paper. Um, I have a 2B pencil just because that's all I sort of, that's the first thing I grabbed. You can use any a HB or a, um, a H or whatever you've got lying around. So I've got the 2B. Um, and then you probably need a couple of fine liners. So I've got a 0 0.3 here, although I just realized I do have a 0 0.2 right here. So I might, depending on how we go, I might need a 0 0.2 or a 0 0.3. Um, and then for thicker lines, there's a 0 0.7. Um, but again, whatever you've got lying around, sort of a, a thinner one and a thicker one is probably good. Um, and then later on, when I go and put the whites in, we'll see what happens. But I've got a white jelly roll 08 size there. Um, or I do have this kind of Posca paint marker, but paint marker, should I say. But I'm not, uh, let me just show you, I'm not 100%. Um, sold on the on the paint marker and on on this paper because it doesn't really hold any wet media this paper um and i don't know it didn't come out all that smooth whereas this is the white gel pen and yeah there are like little strokes in it but definitely from 
further away you can't really see it so much even on camera when I'm showing it it looks quite smooth actually even though it's not totally smooth um, so there are different opaque whites that you can try to use on tone paper that especially tone paper that doesn't really accept um, wet media so I think you can try a white colored pencil um, you can try a white oil pencil, but I don't think those show up very well, but I haven't tried one myself. Um, you can also try um, like a white charcoal pencil or like a white kind of crayon or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's definitely something I need to investigate more as to a nice opaque white that will work well on this paper that will cover larger areas, but for now I'm probably going to stick to this because it's giving me the best result so far. So anyway, let's get drawing because otherwise we're already six minutes in. See, this is going to be a long video. I might have to cut some stuff out of this if I get too, if it gets too long, but let's see how we go. So um, first of all, I am going to just start off with the shape of the building. Um, and my main focus really is this building. I'm not going to worry too much about what's surrounding it. Um, I'm just kind of keeping it loose and sketchy at the moment. Um, and sometimes, you know, I sometimes I start like this, you know, and sometimes I get the proportions wrong, and sometimes I'm okay with that, and sometimes I'm not, and I'll go back and sort of see if I can, um, you know, fix it or something like that. Um, but let's let's get kind of some of the key lines in just to see if this is going to fit on the page okay. Um, so it's kind of like a bar across here before before the roof ends. Um, let me come down by this. I don't aim for like crazy accuracy in my drawings. Um, I don't know. Just I don't see why you should put that pressure on yourself. I mean, I think getting basic proportions right is good. But I'm, you know, I am more of the, um, just in, you know, just interpret things the way I see it. I just draw it the way I see it. Um, so you know, just try and do my best to get some of the lines in the right place, and so the thing's recognisable. But then, the rest is just stylistic choices, to be honest. Um, so let's just try and get some of these. What's good about these buildings is they have very defined sections. Um, you know, so. There's middle lines because there's like the the wooden beams everywhere. You know, it's like really quite quite nice to nice and easy to sort of section pits off. Um, but you'll see, I don't always like fit everything in. You know, um, even though I am aiming to sort of try and get it everything in proportion, sometimes I don't leave myself space to get to get absolutely every detail in. But again. I think that is fine. I think, you know, just as long as it's sort of recognisable, then you don't have to get every last little detail in. If you don't want to, you know, some people like to do that. They, they take joy in getting things as accurately as possible. Um, I guess I'm just not one of those people. Um, but that's okay. So we've got to this window now. I'm just trying to get the basics in just to make sure this is going to fit on the page which I am a bit concerned it's not going to at the moment. And this is when I'll start squashing things up and then it doesn't, then it's not with the right proportions anymore, you know? Um, okay, so coming down here. I think we might just get it in, you know? Or, I mean, you know, maybe we can just do the top of the building. We don't need to do like the entire building. Um, so these are kind of like, like the plants here, like maybe we just focus on the top of the, because that's where the interesting lines and stuff are. Um, I don't think I've ever actually really done this before, so let's see, let's see how that goes, you know, and they can kind of just tail off here. So I guess, um, for this kind of style of drawing or for this like kind of I should have made it maybe I should, to fit on the page I should have made it smaller but then I feel like you're going to lose the detail of like the the lines of the wood and stuff so I don't know maybe I'm okay with just stopping it there let's see 
how that how this works you know and this is cool that this is like happening right here because like you can kind of see what sort of decisions I make I suppose about these kinds of things when this sort of stuff happens you know um, so at this point it's like you would decide whether you would carry on and just go for it or whether you would like you know start again like rub you know erase some things and start again um, but I think for the interests of this video and I, if any of you have watched some of my or a few of my videos by now I think hopefully you would get the idea that I do like to experiment quite a lot um, and I'm I like to think I'm not too afraid of failure I think I do actually get in a bit of a bad mood if I do a bad drawing or like what I think is a bad drawing um, and <laughs> I don't think that's very healthy um, so but yeah but then uh, on the flip side I really like experimenting so it's like well what do you expect you know you don't know this is going to work so of course like it's going to go wrong you know because that's you know that's how it goes that's like the risk of experimenting so um yeah anyway um it's my own personal art demons that I have to do battle with there um not to get grumpy when things don't turn out how I want them to so you might be able to see here again, oh, I might just fit it in actually, like these kind of lines on the top of the roof there, they're not like exactly in the right place, but that's okay. Um, and then we have this guy here, so I mean, yeah, I think in drawings like this, I do tend to lay in a more pencil than maybe I would do if I was using watercolour or something. That's because I like want to know that everything's sort of in the right place, you know, before I go and start drawing in pen. Um, because I feel like these kind of drawings that I'm doing are a bit more, they're a bit tighter and they're a bit more like, I want them to be a bit more, I was going to say exact then, but definitely then it's not exact, but I think you know what I mean, just like, it's not loose and sketchy really, it's like a more controlled kind of illustration. So again, like not everything's going to be perfect in it, in, in the right place, but like I'm trying to like make it as good as I can do without kind of going a bit insane you know um so that's that top bit there and then so you can use like you know things like where these windows are you know you can then use them as a bit of a marker so for where the other bits go so I can see this one sort of these lines where they are in comparison with the window frame so this one here for example lines up with this window frame here um, I hope my hand's not ca causing too much shadow. I'm just going to move this light a bit and let, let's see if... I don't even know if that's actually even doing anything. The joys of life. Well, I suppose it's not life, but you know what I mean. Real-time filming. Is that going to be better? Mm, not really. I think we just have to deal with it, guys. Sorry. I haven't got a YouTube, uh, YouTube studio yet to do this stuff in. So, anyway. So, yeah. You get the idea. And then, see, I think what I'll do is I'll just put a line through there for when I come to ink. And then, so I won't draw it all in pencil right now, but I have guidelines when I come to do the inking. Um, and again, I kind of embrace, like, the wonkiness, to be honest. Like, I'm not too fussed if things don't line up exactly as they should. Um, you know, it just is what it is. What it is. Um, I'm, I like it when things are just slightly out of kilter or not quite right, you know. I think it lends itself a bit of charm. Um, so I've just realised we are doing this real time, so I need to like stop messing around and just kind of get on with it. Um, so yeah, I've committed to the idea that we're going to kind of cut it off here at the, the flowers. Um, so there's this kind of... But that's cool. I mean, everything above the flowers is like the cool architecture stuff anyway. Um, and then the writing kind of goes from here. 
This is always my um this is the hardest part for me is doing it's getting the like the lettering of pubs. I can just never get it in the right place or looking right. Dunno if you guys saw that video I did of the Cross Keys pub, but yeah, I made a right mess of a um the uh name of the pub on the on the front. I was just hoping that no one noticed. So here, when I've done these stripes, oh no, there are three, I was about to say there's four, so I've done that wrong, but no, nope, there's three. I'll be quiet. That's fine. Okay, nothing over there. Not there. And then I think there's like a picture here of, probably of King George, which, I don't know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. Um, we'll do something maybe that looks like it. So that's a window there. There's like a big window here. That's the floor. Sort that out when I come to ink it in a minute. Uh, is there anything over here? Uh, and this kind of comes. Oh, I see. Okay, there's kind of these weird semicircle things here. Again, we'll do all that when I come to the pen. Um, and then yeah, so here is like this weird picture thing. And then... Okay. What's here? This is a window. Okay. And these are windows. Okay, so I think that's pretty much mapped out. Um just trying to think of whether I might put in some of these other buildings just like really you know in grey um, and not really too defined you know just so they're very clearly in the background I think that might be cool I can deal with those later though just gives it a bit, bit of atmosphere then like it's, you can tell it's sandwiched between other buildings. Um, and then there's kind of like this weird oh, I put that in the wrong place, hang on. Um, I really like to use these kneadable erasers, by the way, because they're just, um, they don't damage your paper like these kind of hard, don't use something like that, it's, it's just awful, just completely ruins things. Um, oops, even this thing, I don't know, these hard white erasers I just don't get on with, they usually make marks and they ruin your paper as well, especially if you're doing watercolour, so um, yeah, don't don't use those. Definitely get yourself a kneadable eraser because they don't maybe erase quite so well, but they're much gentler on your paper. And if you're just using your pencil reasonably lightly, then it should, you know, it should get everything you need. I don't know, I've done that wrong, but we'll get to it in a minute. Um, and then there's this other building. Just making this kind of 
I always like to look for the negative uh, space on the in the sky and actually um, let me just see so here like this is actually you know this is the sky here so you can always look for the like nice negative space there so I'll see how it goes I might do like white up here but it depends if it's going to take away from the white on the building there we'll have to see um, but yeah I mean so there's kind of like a facade that comes down here but kind of just gives it a bit of context I mean we'll see if I actually even do anything with these guys um, later on or whether you know they'll just stay super sketched in but I think it does add a nice bit of context um, yeah I mean I wish I'd been able to fit the whole building in if I'd taken a bit more time maybe uh, maybe I would have done but again let's just sort of see what happens here um, and I'll go from there so I think I'm going to use this 0 0.2 because um, it's better to start thinner and then if you want to thick, thicken up any lines then you can do that um, uh, later on when you're kind of adding a bit more emphasis to things and stuff like that so I'm just going to move over here a bit so I've got a bit more room um, so I haven't got the most optimal like uh, filming setup as you can see um, I've got a bit of shadows and stuff like that and I've also got the camera right by my arm so it's always, um, always a bit tricky really but I hope, hopefully you guys can see this okay and it's um, not bothering you too much but one day one day I hope to like invest in a bit of equipment um, so it makes these videos a bit better um, but I th think I probably need to have somewhere to live first before I do that so priorities really uh, I have to make do with uh, the room that I have right now to use and I've told the uh, I've told the people here, the family members. I was like, can't make any noise. I'm pain of death. I'm doing this, not live, but real time, and I don't want to edit too much of this out. So um, I even told them not to not to come and give me coffee. So guys, that's how much of a that's how much of a sacrifice I'm uh, how much I'm sacrificing for you guys. Maybe that's why I can't speak this morning because uh, I haven't had my coffee yet. Um, so again, I'm not worrying too much about, um, you know, I'm, I'm obviously doing my best to try and get like lines nice and straight and stuff, but, um, you know, there's only so much you can do. Um, and also, I don't know if you guys have um, ever checked uh, Shoreditch Sketcher out. So that's what his handle is on Instagram, Shoreditch Sketcher, and his name is Phil Dean, Phil Dean. Um, so he's a uh, sketcher from the UK. I was about to say from London then, but I don't think he is. Uh, I, th I think he might be a northerner, so he'd be a bit upset if I said he was from London. I'm not sure. I can't remember anyway. Um, he, he lives in London, though, so that'll do. Um, and uh, as his name suggests, he sort of sketches a lot around Shoreditch. Um but yeah, if you look, I mean, his work is amazing, and he has actually just brought out a book, well, back in August, um, or called Urban Drawing, so that's well worth checking out, um, and um, so yeah, if you look, look at his work, and you're like, oh, that's amazing, and then if you look really up close, you'll see how wobbly his lines are, and that's like not because of bad technique or anything that's just like that is him that is his like um his style you know um so it and it just shows you don't even notice unless you look like really hard you just don't see it um so yeah I highly recommend going and checking out his work um because it's awesome um so this is like where I'll just add in like 
decorative details that I didn't do in pencil because it's like no point like I'll catch them when I get to pen kind of thing um, but I only just do them like very simplistically just to try and capture the the essence of them you know I'm, I'm not gonna like like slave over the details you know as long as it kind of represents that thing then it's okay now the other thing with recording on camera right now I'd probably tilt my book a bit more and maybe I can get away with that a bit because I am just to try these longer lines you know again I'm not going to get them perfectly straight but if you tilt your sketchbook it's just so much easier to draw long lines like that at that kind of angle you know so um, that's much better um, and as you see sometimes I just jump jump all over a drawing like I just for some reason I just really wanted that long line in there you know so um, you know I could be drawing a window up here and then suddenly I'm down here drawing other bits you know and that's just how it is um, so again if there's like you know things I didn't either didn't see or purposefully didn't include in my pencil drawing I'll just obviously add them in now um, so I can see on this side there's a, um, a straight line here and I've drawn one on this side but actually now I'm looking at the photograph that's that doesn't exist that line there so I'm going to draw in this window here just so I can draw in the correct line on the right there otherwise I'm going to forget and it's going to be wrong and which is also fine but that's like a detail that doesn't need to be wrong if, if that makes any sense at all like I might omit things because I can't fit them in because I haven't drawn it very proportionally but here there's plenty of space to get it right there's no reason to get to get that wrong um it's just not been observed you know so there we go so that line's wrong so that's fine I'll come in and erase that in a minute um But yeah, as you see, it's just now a question of kind of uh, going through and just filling filling out bits, really, and make, giving it a bit more life. Um, I remember when I was first starting out, I just used to get so, you know, just do this so slowly and so try and get these lines so perfect, and it's like now I've kind of really loosened up, and I'm like, ah, it is what it is, you know, like it like and actually just like Shoreditch Sketcher sometimes it just a you can't even notice or sometimes it just adds so much more if you if the lines are wonky you know it doesn't matter and you'll find you can come back in and correct a lot of things as well like you might have got something wrong slightly wrong or you might be able to fix it you know um, or those mistakes that you think were like such a big deal when you did them and you're like, oh god, no, it's just going to look rubbish now. Actually, on the finished piece, you just won't even notice them. Um, which is something quite amazing, I've realised. And it, I only really realised this, it only really brought it home to me. I'm going to turn my book now to get these, get these long lines. Um, when I drew a commission... Oh god, I've totally gone off kilter there, I might. Um, drew a commission for someone of a windmill. And I think it was actually my dad looked at it. I was like, oh god, he was like, how do you get those lines so straight? Did you use a ruler? And I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, they are not straight in the slightest. I was like, look at them. I think I even put the paper down and put a ruler next to it. And I was like, these are not straight. And he was like, oh... And he was right, you know, when I stepped away and looked objectively, like, you, unless you really look at it, you just couldn't tell that it's uh, not straight. So, you know, to you it might seem super obvious, but to someone else it won't. See, now this is quite a tricky detail that I'm doing here, which um, could quite easily go off kilter, but again, I'm like, yeah. You know, do, do I worry about it? I don't know. I'll try and get it as good as I can, obviously, but... Um, I just want to tackle this now, really, so I don't have to worry about it later. Um, so sometimes these patterns, you've really got to look at them and go, what's the easiest way to draw this? And that's why I put my guidelines in, you know, and I'm just drawing, like 
I put the pencil crosses in and I'm just drawing lines around it. I think that comes with a bit of confidence because um, definitely when I was starting out doing just little drawings like this, I would basically draw everything in pencil, absolutely everything, and try and get it absolutely like bulletproof, even though it never was. Um, and then I'd basically just go in and trace over it in pen. Um, so there's, I guess there's nothing wrong with doing that, but... I guess it kind of loses some of the joy if you're basically drawing something twice, you know, and then, um, you know, when you come in with pen to trace over it, you're never going to do it perfectly, and then, I don't know. I think it's better to try and get into the habit of letting your expectations go, um, and then also just, um, just going for it, you know, and... Um, just, sorry, I'm trying, finding it hard to, like, talk and draw. Um, I'm trying to remember what my point was. Yeah, just to, like, embrace the fact that it's not going to be perfect in pen, and actually it doesn't need to be going back to what I was just saying, you know, people, like, don't notice, you know, especially if there's, like, loads going on in a drawing, like, the last thing they're going to notice is if you're lines are perfectly straight or whatever and also people don't want to see that in a drawing they want to see the charm of like um how someone's interpreted this building and how they've drawn it and like wow why does that look so cool or cute or whatever and like ah, how do they do that you know because it's like if you want to see the building you look at you look it up on google and you'll look at a photograph and it's like okay there's that building but i want to see how someone's drawn it you know and how they've interpreted it and um, that's far more interesting to me but maybe that's why I like drawing stuff I don't know um, so I was going to say these windows are going to be really narrow but I guess they are on the drawing I'm looking at them and they are pretty narrow windows so it's okay I need to not worry about it just go with it man it's fine um, Okay, yeah, I think I want to get this line in here. See how wobbly that line was? Jeez, okay. Um, that's fine. It's all good. Okay. And I mean, probably, like, you know, these lines, some of them are going to come in and thicken up anyway, and then that's going to, like, make them look less, a bit less wobbly anyway. Um, I think one of the things with the windows to like, you know, make sure you get the right number of window panes in them, especially these old buildings, all the windows are like different, you know, so I think that helps with making a building look a bit more recognisable. I'm just going to do this line across here. Um, so what's going on here? Yeah. So again, this side is different to this side, but I got it right in pencil. There is this... I feel like this one in the picture is going through this one, so let's draw this one first. And then we'll come down. And draw that one. Um, and then... Yeah, this one's bendy here. Uh, I love the style of architecture. It's just so cool. Um, and we're very lucky in the UK that we've there's a lot of it around. Um, I've just seen some spectacular ones from Germany as well, um, which are the drawings I showed you before. Um, there's some beautiful photographs on Pinterest as well. That's where so a lot of the time I'll go to Pinterest and find interesting stuff to draw, mainly just to practice, you know, um, because... I feel like the more I practice as much as possible, um, the better I'll be when, you know, I am out and about urban sketching and stuff like that, or just general art things. I mean, obviously, urban sketching world is the name of this channel, and that is um, one of my predominant passions. Um, but, you know, I, I just... It doesn't mean I don't do any other kind of drawing. I like all drawing, you know. Um, and at the moment... I've just designed or drawn some Halloween-style paisley for a friend who's brought out a clothing range. 
Um, and, you know, everyone really loves that. So we're going to do like another one and you're like a fantasy one of like dragons and fairies and stuff. And it's like, I have never drawn that stuff actually ever in my life. So um, it's really cool. I'm looking forward to the challenge of doing that just because I love drawing, you know. Um, I'm not all that great at it, at it yet, I'd say, like in comparison to like some of the incredible stuff I see around. But I think I do have my own little style, you know, and well, that's what people uh, like from me, you know. Um, so that's fine, you know. There's no need to overthink it too much, but I just literally don't think you can do... God, that line was awful. Um, I literally just don't think you can do too much practice. I mean, um, I'm even considering... I've never been to art school, and I've never done any formal art training at all. Um, I just decided one day I really wanted to... I think it was after just seeing so much cool stuff on Pinterest and Instagram and whatnot back in the... like mid 2000s you know I was just like this I just want to draw this is just something I want to be able to produce this kind of work you know um and that's kind of what uh got me into just yeah just deciding I wanted to do it so I think I did a bit of internet research and uh, then I decided to get this book um it's keys to drawing by Bert someone I'll put it in the description below um but yeah, and it, it, I just I just decided, I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to follow all the exercises. I'm not someone who usually does that kind of stuff, but I'm going to do this. I'm committed to it. Um, and to be honest with you, bar a few months here and there, maybe when I, you know, was learning or whatever, or life got in the way, um, I have been drawing almost every day, you know, and not because I'm like, oh, I need to sit down and draw now because like, you know, but just because I wanted to, you know, and I think that's obviously a true mark of um, passion. You know, I'm a musician as well. And so that kind of whole concept of practicing every day has been drilled into me from a long time. But it's also been like something to not fear, but ugh, practice. Oh, God, I don't want to do that. Like ugh, piano practice. God, I don't want to do that, you know. And it's kind of that's the word practice has got that connotation for me. And it's probably the same to you if you were forced to practice music scales when you're a kid um which again I do not begrudge because you know I didn't ever do anything with the piano lessons I had when I was a kid or the violin lessons or whatever but I'm so glad I had them and actually it made me um you know when I moved on to guitar and bass and stuff like that I just taught myself but it kind of instilled the way to practice and what to practice and all that kind of stuff within me. So I don't begrudge it for a second. And actually, I, you know, as my mum predicted, because mums know everything, um, you know, I wish I had carried on with piano, but it just felt so painful to me as a kid. It's just like I just didn't want to do it, you know. But, um, you know, maybe it's something I'll pick up for fun as an adult, you know, in this, in these days and times when we've got, like, access to YouTube and free courses on every possible thing you could imagine um we're just spoiled we could you could just learn anything you want for free learn a language install duolingo and learn it um you want to learn an instrument just look up the three billion youtube videos um available to us for free um you know it's crazy absolutely crazy you can learn everything um so I guess my point is because you can learn anything and you can learn anything for free then you might as well learn something you're into you know and I guess I thought my thing was music and it really was for a very long time and I still love music you know I've got I've got music uh related tattoos you know um it is my first love and it always will be my love but um I've just found drawing um just to be I don't know just to be so much easier so much more accessible to me. I don't know what it is, but there we go. Um, cool. Okay, so I think that's the main bit drawn. So there's no really right right way or wrong way to do this sort of thing. When I leave these like um, buildings in the background, probably till the end, just to decide what to do with them once this is finished. Because then I feel like only then will I know what will make the 
like nicest impact kind of thing. So I'm not going to bother like going and erasing most of this, so I'm going to get rid of that line there because that's just wrong. Um, and then I am going to um, put in, actually I'm going to get rid of some of this, I'm going to put in the white um, first, which you know, I don't know, I've never really, I haven't really seen anyone else doing any sort of drawing tutorial quite like this subject matter on YouTube. Could be wrong, didn't maybe didn't look that hard. But anyway, so maybe they would do white bits at the end, but I think where the white gel pen kind of goes over the lines and stuff, um, then I'm gonna redraw some of the black lines and I'm probably gonna go in and do them thicker anyway. So I might as well just do the white gel pen first. I think that, that's my point. I'm gonna stop rabbiting. Um, so I probably will time put this part in time lapse because this video is already getting quite long. Um, and I don't think there's any part of you guys that want to sit me sit and watch me do this in real time. So I think I'm gonna shut up and think of some more intelligent things to say whilst I colour this in white. So guys, that's pretty much the white uh, gel pen bits done. Might come back and um, tidy a few things up uh, later on. But um, the one thing I did forget to mention at the start of this video, it's a bit, bit dumb of me, is that I'm going to be using these Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens. Um, and they are the ones with the brush nib. So not the soft brush, but the brush. Um, and they have India ink in them, uh, which means that they do not go through the back of the paper like an alcohol marker would, which is pretty cool. Um, so they're great to use on this kind of paper because it's like not a very thick paper, it's more of a sketching paper. So um, so I've got the, the set of the six pens in shades of grey so they come with uh, three warm greys and three cold greys so I think that's it yeah so they've got, the, got it written on, on them obviously but yeah so three three warms and three colds when I'm drawing I like to keep them in their threes in different piles so that I know which is which um, because I mean they do kind of obviously create different greys so you want to you know, if you're kind of going working from light to dark, you don't want to accidentally pick up the mid grey in the cold, you know, in the cold grey. So, um, yeah. So I um, am going to use, I'm going to use the warm greys for the wood of this um, building. And I'm going to start with the middle one, which this one is warm grey four. So let's see how that goes. Um, and this is obviously to get the the darker parts of the wood. Um, but, you know, sometimes if I'm not sure, I'll start with like a lighter, a lighter gray, you know, and then you can kind of build it up. Um, these don't sort of hurt the paper too much, you know. But they are kind of, um, something something you need to get used to is they are kind of streaky, unlike alcohol markers where you can get like a nice kind of smooth lay down. I do find these are like more streaky. I don't know if it's just because maybe I'm not using them properly or I don't know. 
Um, but either way, sometimes it's nice though because it can actually reduce this kind of wood grain um, kind of effect. So um, yeah, the reason I use like the warmer grey is because um, I feel like the wood the wood here would, is like a warmer colour kind of thing and then the colder greys I might use more for like metal or maybe even a street or um, something like that. Um, but I don't think there's any hard and fast rules here really, it's just, uh, you know, go with what you think you want to do. Um, so as you can see, this has got like a nice flexible brush tip, but it's not the soft one, there are soft brush tips as well. Um, so you can get nice fine lines, but if you press harder, you get like a nice thicker line too. So that's pretty cool. I think I'm just deciding on the spot as I go, like what I'm doing, which I'm sure is how a lot of people work, because you're trying to make decisions on the fly about what's going to what's going to look the best, you know, so I'm doing these bits in here and then I'm thinking whilst I'm doing it, oh maybe actually this part here would look better in the lighter grey so it doesn't get quite as lost. Now I'm going to do these lines here in the lighter grey just so I remember to not colour them in black, or the dark grey should I say. Um, and you know, if I don't like the effect later, then I can just come in and darken it up again. But I just want to get those in now so I don't accidentally do the darker colour. So I think if you can, it's important to like vary your, your tones, especially when you're doing like a monochromatic kind of piece like this. Um, try and use different tones um, as much as possible really, otherwise it's just going to look super flat. Now obviously I am using grey paper and I am just doing lots of grey over the top and the white. Um, so I do, you know, need to be sensible about thinking about using the grey that I've got, you know. Um, because I can get a bit carried away and then I just cover up all the paper and I'm like, well, you know, I could have done that drawing on any paper, you know, the whole point is that it's grey toned paper and we want to take advantage of that. Um, so I need to think about that really, but I think I'm going to leave the windows like this grey because I think it looks really nice actually, I think it contrasts really nicely with the, with the white. But I need to think about what I'm going to do there because I drew an accidentally, accidental bit of white, got carried away, forgot that was a window. I do like how if you just press hard on these, you can get these markers, you can just fill in a whole section, you know, like this. So I can just press reasonably hard and you just get that whole section like that. So you don't have to mess around too much. That's cool. I like it. I am really enjoying uh, using this book and these markers and the white gel pen at the moment. I really like the effect of it, I think it's really striking. Um, and it's just a nice break from what I usually do as well, so it's nice to kind of do something a bit different. And you know, you never know, something I do, I learn to do here might actually help or inform something I do with watercolours later down the line, you know. Uh, so I think I'm going to do this line here. Black like that. Not black. I keep saying black. It's not black. Dark grey.
I feel like it's quite a forgiving way to draw doing this kind of thing because as I said before it's kind of I mean arguably you could just maybe you could skip out the whole pen line drawing and just go pencil and then do these lines because I do feel like um you can see the back lines if you look close enough but I don't know maybe that's something I should try next is uh forget the pen at least at first and uh just go straight into the mark from pencil straight into the markers see how see what see what happens and then if needs be come in with pen afterwards and sort of tighten up a few bits maybe i don't know okay so i think i might do this cross beam here at the mid gray just to keep it keep it consistent and then i might come in and do I think I've got some stray blocks here where but that's okay we'll just roll with it it's fine it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be exact and now I kind of got a bit got into a bit of a mess down here so maybe we can rectify that Right, so now I'm just trying to decide. I think I might do these long bits here. Mm. I think I might do them in the mid grey. To start with. Anyway, yeah, let's see what happens. I'm going to move my book around to do this. I didn't mention this before, but this the paper in this book is just so smooth and so silky. Really not used to drawing on something like this, you know, it's lovely. And for those of you that don't know, I have just got the Hanamula um, toned watercolour sketchbook as well. So they've just brought out well, not just, maybe like six months ago, but I've just got my hands on um, their watercolour tone sketchbook. So you might see a few videos of me working um, in watercolours or um, watercolour pencils. Um, might even try some gouache in there as well, actually. That could be quite fun. Um, yeah, doing doing stuff in there too. So, um, yeah, getting, uh, getting into the old toned paper situation. Uh, I think I'm going to do these ones dark here. I'm just kind of just going to end it like you know just just going to kind of fade out like that. Not fade out but That's fine, you know. The focal, 
It wasn't intentional, as we know, because we've talked about that, but on the focal element to be here, you know. Um, so I think I want to do this section black here, um, because I think it will really make the rest of it sort of nice differentiation between the rest of it. I'll do that in a minute. Um, let's do this bit first, because I'm I need to get up and go and get go and find my brush pen because I didn't bring it with me. That's the picture. I will admit I am making this up a bit now, but that's fine. I'm taking bits from the real picture, but I might be slightly moving stuff to where they're not actually. Got to have a bit of artistic license, though, guys, and we, you know, it's fine. I'm definitely making this up, by the way. Definitely. Okay, I might genuinely leave it like that. Um, I will do something with these bushes in a bit. Ooh. I also have to decide what to do with these buildings, but it's fine. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. Let's let's come in with this 0.7 C. If we can just. Make some of the parts that are forward really pop out by adding some darker lines. Okay. So I want to add a darker line there. On there. And then I tend to go and add thicker lines to anything where I think there might be a bit of shadow, you know, even though I will come in and do some shadows in a minute. But do you see how that really makes it pop out? It's usually on the underside of things, I find. And then these windows. I'm keeping the panes the grey, but they do have shadows on them. Or where the frame is. Just 
sure I get that in. On the right side there. Give things a bit more depth. So, and see the windows on the left, you tend to see the, the frame there. And these ones on the right, you can see the frame sort of more on the right, and we're looking up at it so we can kind of see the undersides of the frame windows, which gets more pronounced the higher up you go. I mean, it doesn't have to be like totally accurate, but I think it really helps the drawing when you get the sense of depth, you know, in the right kind of places. And it is just a question, really, of looking at the picture, the reference, and kind of trying to see where the thickest parts are or the darkest parts are. I find um, as well when you're adding shading and stuff, I find it really helpful if you squint your eyes when you're looking at a picture and you can tell where the darkest parts are. But some stuff I just, over time, of I instinctively know where I want to put my darker lines. And that just kind of comes with a bit of practice, I think. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm going to go and I'm gonna, just going to colour these bits in, actually. And then I'm going to go and get my brush, my black brush pen. Maybe actually I can use the cold grey for the plants. I don't think this is much more different than the yeah than the paper tone. So maybe I can use the tone of the paper and just use this as a bit of shadow. It's all just experimentation. I think that looks all right. Maybe on the underneath side of these plants that are shadow and then like under the flowers. Just give it a bit of texture. Mm. Some of these flowers are white, so I think it might look pretty cool if they're in white. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, just a little bit. The other thing about these pens, you know, you can layer them so you can put the first marks down, but then you can make it a bit darker too, you know. So I think that looks all right. Okay, black brush pen. Okay, so I have my brush pen. I got this the other day. It's, uh, look at how fancy it is. Copic. Oh, it's all sparkly. 
and it's a nylon brush and I did try it and it seems to be waterproof so that's good because I wasn't too sure if it was going to be or not so if I use it with watercolours then that's good um, so I think I'm just going to colour in this pub sign here black so that when um, I go to put the writing on it it's really going to stand out um, so yeah I haven't really used this yet it's got a really nice Nice tip, it's very soft. This is almost what I think the, the Pit Artist pens I was using there, if they, if I had them in the soft brush pen, that I reckon, a uh, soft brush nib, I reckon they'd be like this, because this is literally like using a brush. Um, it's a bit streaky, maybe that's obviously just my technique. It's fine. It's a bit streaky through here, isn't it? Need to get used to using it. Anyway, for the purpose of this drawing, it's going to be fine. Um, so I might just go around the edge of that with a fine liner just to make sure it's like nice and neat the edges a bit let's see I don't think that yeah so it can go through or anything that's fine um cool okay Just let that dry. I'm still might do that bit there white because this little roof thing seems to be a part of the the pub by the looks of things from La Picture. So let's do that. Uh, mm, I slightly messed it up, but that's fine. I think I drew it too big in the pencil. As you can see, I do occasionally take some liberties with these kind of drawings, and that's absolutely fine to do. It's your drawing, you can do what you want with it. Um, if you're trying to record the world around you quite faithfully, then that's a different matter, but an illustration like this um, I'm totally fine with taking liberties so let's get the old white copy, uh, not Copic uh, gel pen out I think it's my favourite part is adding adding the white bits to the grey paper I don't know it seems really satisfying for some reason I think it's, it's just so not what you're used to doing, you know, you're used to working on white paper and everything gets darker, so it's quite fun. I don't know why it's so satisfying, but there we go. Okay. And then let's use the mid one. I'm going to deliberately do it in strokes like this to make it look like almost like the tiles of the roof. Okay. And then it's a bit darker underneath, so let's use the, the dark one. And it kind of comes back here a bit so okay um that will do oh do white bits in here in my kind of made up bit 
I mean, it's not entirely made up. It's sort of there, actually, just in a slightly different place. So that's fine. It's also learning, you know, if I do, maybe I'll do this building again. I don't know, but um, I'll know what not to do. Um, occasionally I get asked to do commissions of pubs and stuff, but then obviously if I'm doing that, I take far more time and get it like really right. But for something like this, where we're just drawing and we're having fun and it's more about how I'd go about doing this kind of drawing on this kind of paper, then, you know, I'm not going to sweat the sweat the small stuff. There's more to life than that, so that's fine. Um, cool, okay. I mean, not crazy happy about the way this finishes down there, but again, that's fine. Um, I'm just really trying to decide whether to do anything with those buildings in the back. Hmm. Maybe I could do them in a different... I just think it's going to ruin the vibe if I, because they're such big. I don't want to go too detailed because I want to keep the detail on this drawing. Um, the other thing I did go and get whilst I was um, getting my brush pen is these ink tents pencils. Um, entirely not necessary, but I quite liked the look of those reddish pinkish flowers and I thought that might be fun to like add those just as like one tiny little pop of colour. I think that looks really cool. There we go. That's it, and I'm using the Intense Ink Tense pencils purely because they're the only pencils I have to hand right now, so that is the only reason why. Okay, I've decided I am going to go for it on these other buildings, so, but I'm going to do it just very, yeah, very kind of simply. I'm adding some little details here that I didn't quite get in the first drawing. Um, and only because they kind of become a bit of a reference point here, actually. Oops. Um, yeah, I don't want to get too carried away with this, but it could look kind of cool, so... Let's just see what happens.
Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this happens sometimes. Stuff goes a bit awry. But that is fine. There is no need to panic. Again, if I was doing like a full on commission, I'd probably do this a bit neater. But that's fine. Okay, I'm using the 0 0.3 though, and I just want to use the 0 0.7, I think. So I think I could have been more careful with the drawings around it, but um, the buildings around it, but I think it does, I think it really helps to kind of tell a bit more of a story than just so you can see that it is sort of nestled amongst other buildings. Um, so, you know, that's fine. Um, I think in this other sketch, for example, um, you know, here I was trying to get the idea the, um, there was stuff in front of this building and it was set back a bit. I don't think I quite got it right. And there's also a building in the background there. And it, it got a bit away from me here, I think, as well. Um, but here I think it worked well that you could see there's like, it hasn't got any outlines. I think that worked quite nicely. Um, you can see this is in the built in the background and this house is connected to this wall. I hope you can tell that sky there, you know. So um, I like how this one turned out. I like how this turned out. I don't think I quite got the effect right, um, and it was quite got quite complicated here, and I couldn't really 
but yeah I do like the effect of that um, I think that's the only yeah examples I've got to show you but anyway um, so I mean maybe that's the thing I just felt like there was such big areas to colour that it really could have like um, just overpowered the main the main sketch what I like to do is um, come back in and like really darken the outlines if there's stuff around it you know just to really push this kind of forward um, so yeah I think that's good and then I think I'm just going to write the George on here um, and kind of keep it fairly simple I think maybe we should do a little there is a little circle in here so with a picture maybe we can do something there And I think there's like a figure and stuff in there, but I think that's going to be, maybe I'll just colour it in. Sometimes you've got to keep things simple. There we go. And then maybe I'll just differentiate this a bit. I think I might outline this as well, just so. Why is it looks a bit weird? I think it's probably not the um, ideal ending to the picture there, but um, it is what it is. And after all, this is just a sketch, isn't it? So just a sketch in our sketchbook. That's all. Oh, I'm getting bitten bossed by mosquitoes all over the place. It's the only downside of uh, summer here is bloody mosquitoes. <laughs> uh, right, so I've obviously covered up um, entirely where um, my wording was before my letters. So I'm just trying to see that T kind of starts there. Um, I'm just trying to try and keep it simple. As I try and keep the letters even, I don't make them too. They're not very. Uh, okay, the G sort of sort of starts there, so I'm almost on track. They're not too ornate on this pub anyway, so that's nice. So I'm really just trying to make sure they're about the same height. Make sure I spell it right. There we go, it's not too bad. Um, there's kind of like a fine white line around it. I could do with my thinner gel pen here, I suppose, but oh well. I'm not doing very well at collecting my materials before the sketch, unfortunately. There we go. And I can always come in with the past where my hand gets a bit shaky. There we go. Right, I think that's pretty much all I'm going to do on that, guys. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed sort of sitting and drawing with me um, maybe you've been trying out this one too if you have do um, tag me on Instagram if you post on Instagram then um, do tag me urban sketching world because um, I'd love to see um, drop me a comment in the comments below um, to kind of let me know where you are with these things whether you enjoyed that or not um, and if you've got any tips for drawing on this kind of paper um, and obviously do go and check out urbansketchingworld.com as well because I've got loads of stuff over there 
um, in terms of tutorials and inspiration um, and that kind of thing. Um, I think I'm just going to go through actually and just add in a few, a few more shadows. I'm just doing it with the light. See there I was thinking I was done but I can't leave things alone. I'm just doing it with a light grey. Just didn't feel like it had enough depth when I was talking to you there. I was like, oh, hang on. Am I done? I don't know. I suppose this is our cursus artists. We're like never, never happy, never, never quite finished, never know when to finish. Just felt it was still looking a bit flat. That was a bit of a false ending for you. Sorry, guys. Hang on. Kind of want to do some shadows up here. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to be brave. Doesn't go over the white gel pen too bad. See what difference that makes, how 3D that makes that look. That's cool, isn't it? I like that. Um, sometimes you just got to be brave and draw all over your drawing that you've just laboured over for two hours. Sometimes you've got to go for it, haven't you? Yeah. Does that look done? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm done. Now I'm done. All right. Thanks for hanging out, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.